Rebuilding a vintage open steam launch, part 24. Machining and silver soldering the condenser oil trap. This is going to be split into two parts, otherwise it will be far too long. Some people say that the videos are quite short, but when I look at the statistics of the channel, I generally get about 50% of the viewing time being active. So they're not really, they're about the right length. And don't forget it takes quite a long time to film, edit and voice over these videos. And best of all, they're free. In this clip I'm using a deburring tool to clean up the inner edge and now I'm going to use a file to clean up the outer edge. And I do this at both ends, so I end up with a piece of tube that hasn't got any burrs on the inside edge and is not sharp on the outside edge. Health and safety notice, keep your fingers clear of the chuck at all times. So now I have the tube and it's time to make the plugs to go in the end of the tube. This is the first one. The outside diameter of the piece of brass is 2 inches, the same as the tube. So all I'm doing is reducing it to fit inside the tube, and in this clip I'm drilling it with a centre drill. And then I'm going to drill all the way through with a tapping size drill, which is 5 30 seconds of an inch, for a 2BA thread. And this is going to be for fixing the mounting bracket to the condenser. And once that's done, it's time to part off the piece of brass using a standard parting tool, and in this case, I'm using a power cross feed to part it off automatically. Filming in this lathe is a bit of a problem because it's difficult to position the camera. So this is a different angle with the camera tripod sat up on the lathe bed, which is not good for the camera. And it's not good for me because I'm having to watch the camera all the time in case it falls off. What I propose to do this week is make a special fitting that attaches near the lathe that I can just clip the camera into. That way the camera will be held safely and I can get more interesting shots of what I'm doing. In this clip, in exactly the same way as with the previous clip, I'm machining the end of the 2 inch bar to fit inside the tube. It's still a bit tight yet. It's worth remembering that if you get the piece of brass a really tight fit in the tube, that's generally good engineering practice. But if the plug is too tight in the tube, the silver solder cannot flow around the edge of it by capillary action and silver solder the brass plug to the tube. In this episode, I'm going to silver solder these two plugs to the tube. And when I do so, I'm going to do one correctly and I'm going to make a complete hash of the second one. A lot of tutorials go, this is one I prepared earlier. But no, what I'm going to do in real time is make a thorough mess of one end along with an explanation as to why I'm doing it this way and why I shouldn't be doing it this way. Once again, in exactly the same way as with the first plug that I made, I'm patting off the component using power cross feed. It's just easier than winding the handle. So now I have the components for a condenser oil trap. I have two plugs that fit in the end of the tube, and each of these plugs have a hole down the centre which is tap 2BA. And before I commit myself to finishing off this component, I'm putting it in position in the bottom of the boat and making sure that it's still an easy job to remove and install the gas canister on the shelf in the bow of the boat. I know that the superstructure is going to fit because I measured it in the first place and the tube is 2 inches and I have about 2 and a quarter inches to play with. I'll just double check that because I have to allow for the mounting bracket that's yet to be fitted. Everything's okay so it's time to silver solder the parts together. I've applied the Easy Flow number 2 flux. I'm using Silver Flow 55 silver solder, and some of it I bend into a ring, and that's down inside the tube. So when the tube reaches the correct temperature, this ring of silver solder will melt and flow around the joint. I must stress that the burner head that I'm using is larger than normal. I use a standard plumbing type for silver soldering pipes. I don't want this kind of heat. This one is much more ferocious, and believe me, it's getting warm. This is in the outer part of the workshop with the garage door fully open and it's very cold, but I'm quite warm at the moment. Occasionally my arm will get in the way because I must watch what I'm doing. A lot of the time when I'm doing these jobs, I can watch the viewfinder on the camera, but not wishing to spontaneously combust, I had to keep my eye firmly on the flame. I couldn't put the camera above to show you what was going on down inside but I watched the silver solder flash around the joint and I turned the heat off shortly afterwards. Once the tube was fully cooled, I used some Scotch-Brite to scour the internal part of the other end of the tube. I apply a generous coat of Easy Flow No. 2 Flux as before. 
And now it's time to attempt to show you how not to silver solder. First of all, I didn't fit the cap quite as close to the tube as the other side, so there's a bit of a gap, thinking, hmm, the silver solder will flow into this gap. And then initially, I held the gas burner too close to the work, so I'm not getting maximum heat. And then, I apply the silver solder far too early. You should wait until the flux takes on a watery appearance, then the flux will run, and then the silver solder will run. As the work gets hotter, the blob of silver solder runs into the joint. I'll put some more on. Oh dear, I melted that and lost it. I'll put a big piece on this time, because I'm sure we're going to need more of it. And I'm holding the burner a long way away from the work, so it's getting a lot hotter. Now I'm rotating it to do the other side. And again, oh yes, look at all this silver solder, this is wonderful. I think we'll have some more of that. Too much silver solder, it's running everywhere. There are big blobs of it running all over the bench, and the work's getting hotter and hotter. And if I'm not careful, I may even be successful enough to melt the brass tubing. Who needs silver solder when you can melt the brass tubing together? But no, I'll just apply more silver solder. And look how hot it's getting now. I think that's enough. I think you must get the point by now. I'll let the part cool thoroughly and then use the belt sander to clean it up. One end looks good and the other end looks horrendous with lots of blobs of silver solder. I suppose I can always clean it like this and then paint it with some of that gloopy black paint and no one will be any wiser. But instead, I put the part back in the lathe. I faced across the end and in case the experts out there are all saying, why has he got it stuck so far out of the chuck? Is he stupid? Well, no. The chuck is gripping the other end cap. If I put it in the middle, the chuck will crush the tube, because the tube has been heated and it's softer than it was. This clip shows me cleaning up the part using some emery paper. Be very careful when you're doing this, it is quite dangerous. And now I've turned the piece round in the chuck and I'm machining the other end. I'm taking a very light facing cut. I cannot afford to mangle this up, so I'm not putting a lot of pressure on at all. Once again, I'm using the emery cloth. To be perfectly honest, I'm only going through the motions on this bit to show what is possible. It isn't very perfect. What I did was, I put the part back in the chuck, holding it by one of the ends. The other end was supported by a live centre, and I took a very light cut with a sharp lathe tool all the way down the outside. And it now looks like this. The next video will show the rest of the operations and how I convert this simple tube into a fully working condenser oil trap. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.